IO Manager is the Dark Souls of management games, and you cannot convince me otherwise. Or should I say the Elden Ring of management games, uh, whatever gives me more engagement. And what that means is that it's extremely hard due to power seemingly out of my control. I'm trash at it, and I quite literally need to get good. I develop a minor tick every time one of my girls, Tihi, decides to bully one of the other girls. I take every troll in the scandal as a personal attack and so help me god above one of my singles flop due to my rapidly growing fan base deciding that this song isn't pandering to them hard enough, I will lose it. I try to live with vigor like it was crack or AP, but that doesn't stop my girls from suffering mental breakdowns and filing for early retirement. The idol industry is a ruthless, cutthroat, bloodthirsty industry, and I feel my morality and soul slowly fade away as I create the best idol group ever seen by the universe. And you know what? I'm having an absolute blast playing this game. I've peeked into the abyss, and I'm all in, baby. <laughs> I know Manager is a game that's been on my radar for a long while. Well, I say radar, but it was more that I recognized it when I saw it on the Steam store and in some threads. I mean, the thought of managing idols seemed novel and fun enough, so I bought it. And that's exactly what you do in this game. And yet, somehow, it's way more than that, especially when you get into the story. See, in this game, you're a Joe Schmo who decides that they want to manage an idol group for some reason. The game doesn't actually tell you. I guess that makes it easier to self-insert a further accident by your character's, uh, faceless features. Personally, I see that as a great money making opportunity which helps me justify my later actions which in turn helps me sleep better at night. Anyway, you rent out a space from your guide emperor Fujimoto, uh, more on him later, and you're on your way. There's a lot to discuss about what goes down in this game so let's start with the idols and go from there. Recruiting idols is simple enough. You can pay for the different tiers of scouting and you get a pool of 5 idols. There are 4 tiers and the odds are affected by how much you pay. There's commons, aka the undesirables who are only useful to throw in the trash or to blame scandals on. Then you have silvers, aka the ones you settle for. Then there are the goals who feel like such an amazing get until you gaze upon the summit, the final tier, the yes, platinum no. girls. These girls are your number one idol and are always best girl unless you somehow have multiple platinums, which just means they'll have to duke it out. The dopamine hit you get from pulling a platinum offsets the blindness you get from the light that shines as you pull it. Anyway, each idol has an overall rating and that's based on their potential. Of course, their stats usually start way lower than that, so there's another thing you have to look at when recruiting girls. What the potential actually means is that up until that number, training is pretty effective and they gain levels easily. Sure, girls can have stats past their potential, but it'll take a lot longer to train once they've reached their max potential. Anyway, in addition to that, they have an age, very important, and a personality quirk, extremely important. Age because idols can't stay idols forever and they'll want to retire, so the younger the better, which is the last time you'll ever hear me say that. Well, unless your platinum idol decides she wants to retire after like a year and there's nothing you can do to convince them and now you're scrambling to get some replacement talents because you put everything into her and... Uh, wait, where was I? Oh, yeah, so the personality is also important because that plays a part in how you deal with them. There's a lot of different personalities that will affect how the idol handles the media, how they deal with each other, or who they like in general. Stats are great and all, but if their personality is garbage, then it's almost not worth it. Uh, almost. So, uh, kind of like real life. Okay, so you recruited your idols, and now you need your staff. I'll be completely honest, they're going to be bad at the start. You don't have the money to be splurging on silly things like stylists and doctors. Plus, you don't have the space for it anyway. Going down the list, you can hire a dancey person who is uh, pretty hot, a singing person, a manager, a stylist, and a doctor. There are three tiers you can hire for all of them with increasing salaries, and in addition to that, you can choose from one of two specializations. This helps diversify your staff as it grows and is super helpful when you start having more things to work on. Of course, and I cannot stress this enough, it will not matter at the start of the game, but later in the game it's fun to build up your staff, especially spamming managers whose only goal in life is to find you brand deals, and you'll need it because the salaries really start to add up. One thing that I like about this game is that just like your idols, you and your staff can also get better at what they do. As they keep doing work in whatever they're doing, they slowly get better at it, whether it's the production side of making songs, organizing concerts, or even just training the girls. And don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure the better they are at their job, the better the research they do. Really quickly I'll touch on research since that is definitely a huge aspect of having the best idol crew in the universe. While your staff is doing a whole lot of nothing, they will start to research instead. Over time, they'll gain points for their respective tree that will let you unlock and upgrade a variety of things, whether it be new genres and lyrics for your girls to sing or how to more effectively utilize your girls in money-making schemes. 
This is actually how you'll get a lot of things you need to be successful, and it makes sense. Sure, you might have the money, but it won't matter if you don't know how to do anything. Like, research is how you get different types of marketing and ways to show your girls to the world, whether it be through interviews or your own TV shows. If you wanted to have your own common writer idol girl show, here's your chance. Also, don't steal that idea, I haven't gotten around to copywriting it. Anyway, unlocking these different things is all cool and dandy, but you can go above and beyond and level up the things that you unlock. This lets you go heavy into specialization, and that's the true way to make bank. Especially when you get super in-depth and start looking at your fans and other metrics to see what kind of idol group you should cultivate. For example, I had a strong adult female audience, the opposite of the channel, so I went hard into hallmarks here of romances and stuff like that. Long story short, research good. We did the boring stuff like recruiting idols and staff, you learn how to get better at different things, but what do the idols actually do? They are the focal point of everything, and to no one's surprise, there's a lot you can do with them. Because being an idol is a lot of work. If the girls aren't doing anything, then they're training or working at the cafe because there's no downtime for an idol. You can individually set the priorities of what they work on first and how hard they work, because again, you don't want any of your girls having a mental breakdown, that's bad for business. With that said, there will be times where there isn't space available for training, so they really do nothing. And that's really bad, so you can hire more staff because you can afford it, right? Or have them work on other things. A big thing will be the girls working on a song or preparing for a concert. For just one song release, there's a lot that goes into it. You have to decide the genre, the marketing, what girls are going to be in it, so on and so forth. And it's a real balancing act full of risk mitigation. For example, is the potential earnings from a marketing plan that targets a certain demographic worth the potential toll in your girls and the increased chance of a flop? Do you make a certain girl to lead on a song because that's her wish and it will give you increased control over her to do what you ask? But remember, no one likes her so the chemistry on the song is worse and that could make for a worse song in general. There's a lot of balancing acts at play when creating a song but it's important because that's where a lot of fans and more importantly, money is made. And now that you have a couple of songs made, hired some top tier managers, made some shows, did some research and cultivated a fan base among a bunch of other things, it's time to get into the concerts. If songs make you money, concerts are what keeps the light on in this operation. Every time I was running low on funds, I knew it was time to start a concert. The biggest thing with the concert is setting the venue, the ticket prices, the set list, and what girls are leading the songs in a set list. You're in full control, so basically it's all your fault if you lose money. A lot of the decisions will be based on the ability of the girls and the fans that you have. In one of my playthroughs, I had an extremely niche audience, which of course meant I overcharged on ticket prices. Hell yeah, they complained, but they still went, so was it really a complaint? Anyway, the game is pretty nice and gives you an idea of how much you stand to make from a concert. As for the girls, it would seem nice to spam your best girls, but the concert drains the idol stamina like crazy, which brings us to the actual concert. During each song, there's a random chance that it goes well or there's a problem. There are some modifiers that help with this, but that's the main loop of concerts. When something happens, you get a choice and that will affect how the performance is going. At the end of the concert, you get a number that shows how well you did, and if done right, you get buku money and fans. Repeat ad nauseum honestly and watch the money shoot to the moon. Past that, there are a couple other things that are important to being an idol. Since idols tend to be pretty popular, they get a lot of offers for sponsorships and stuff like that. Essentially, they get a contract and use a variable amount of stamina to get a nice chunk of change of fans for themselves. There will definitely be a point where you wonder if you're overworking the idols and giving them too many contracts, but then the money comes in and it's probably just easier to send them to the hospital if it gets really bad. With all these fans, the idols start getting random events that could end in controversy or even more fans. It's all random and sometimes the results could be extremely confusing. I really thought people would like my idols being Mimi, but uh, whatever. If you get controversies, you get scandal points, which can cause debuffs on how many fans you get or how your songs and stuff will do. To solve that, you can blame someone, change your policies, or move the offenders to the offshoot group because this is what they deserve. Finally, you can actually have a one-on-one -on -one session with the idols to get to know them and learn some gossip about the other idols. It's pretty simple and the biggest thing to take note of here is the different wishes that they have. Like I said earlier, this is how you get favors and okay, you probably see it on the screen and yes, you can romance the girls, which is kind of funny, especially if your group's policy is no dating. Okay, look, this isn't the place to discuss the power dynamic or morality or whatever. Besides, the idol I chose definitely dominated the relationship because she made more money than me and I'm pretty sure she thought I was dumb as wrong. Also, the other idols were like really weird about it and it ended my playthrough immediately, so I, I didn't really do dating. And this all comes together to make a brutal and difficult game. There are so many forces at play and things to micromanage where if you slack off even a little, you can end up in the red and sleeping with the fishes. 
There are so many avenues to dump your money into, including different rooms in your building, and the expenses can really pile up. There were times where I despaired and wondered how I would even make it out of that hole, especially with random events. Sometimes there would just be things that would take your money or even worse, your idols. I didn't record this, but there was a time where my platinum idol randomly decided that she didn't want to be an idol anymore and gave me her one year notice. I was in a very dark place, so I went to the save file and forced her to stay because how could she do that to me? And don't get me started on the fans. They're supposed to be die hard, but sometimes they just decide not to support the girls or cause controversy. It's made even worse when you see how well the other idol groups are doing. Like, what are they doing that I'm not doing? It's stressful and I have the Doom save files to prove it. Luckily, there is a shining beacon and his name is Fujimoto. Okay, I said I would talk about this near the start, so what's the God Emperor Fujimoto about? He's your loan shark and he's way better than the bank. His loans are interest free and there's no deadline to pay him back. The only catch is that if you want to take out more loans with him, not only do you have to pay him back for the previous loan, you also have to do a mission for him, such as making a certain type of song. Sometimes it can clash with what you're doing, but when the God Emperor tells you to do something, you do it. And then I can use that money to woefully underpay the idols, which unfortunately got patched out. There's a point in the story though where he doesn't have the money to give out anymore and that's when it gets hard for a bit. Yes, there's a story and it's pretty interesting if you ask me. It went a lot deeper than I initially thought it would, and there were some choices that really had me questioning what I should do. It's basically a visual novel where you have roots for the different characters slash scenarios. They're driven by missions with deadlines, sort of like the stuff you would do for Fujimoto, and you can game over if you fail certain missions. As for the actual stories, I found myself hooked and wanting to see what happens. Without spoiling too much, the game really delves into the cultural zeitgeist that is an idol and what it truly means to be an idol. It also explores the relationships that go into making the perfect idol group with random events that reinforce this. And no, not the romantic relationships. There are a lot of good character moments and it's a lot more than I was expecting from this game. Like there will be 10 minute dialogue scenes that get heavy and leave me thinking and with emotions. Throughout all of my scumminess and nickel and diming the fans, these scenes really made me feel human. Like there was something beyond the veil that was just beyond my reach as long as I stayed a scum and refused to understand what it truly meant to lead an idol group. The other characters have such lofty goals and such belief in idols that I felt like the odd one out. But then the cutscene would end, and I would see the money roll in and all that morality shenanigans go right out the door. Idol Manager is a great game and I haven't even touched on every single thing that you could do, like the Endless Manager Train or the Cafe. There's a lot here and minus some bugs, I can't recommend this game enough. There's an announcement of it coming to Switch so hopefully more people try this game out. And maybe they'll update the game. <laughs> also there is mod support that changes what type of idols show up among other things so that's cool. If you liked the video be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content from us. It really helps out and it means a lot. But before you and your buddies recreate the Haruhi dance, have a good day. Oh, but before I forget, we have a Patreon now. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd like to thank our first, like, four patrons. The 20th Century Boy, Mr. Steezy, Dust D3, and Kira. Alright, now have a good day. <laughs>